Greetings to all of my magic book-loving friends out there. You are watching Erudite Magic with me, your host, Jeff Kowalk. Unless you've been living under a rock, you're aware that Joshua Jay has published a new book for the lay audience called How Magicians Think and Why Magic Matters. Most of what we review has to do with learning tricks, and you won't learn any tricks in this book. But I thought that this book would be especially interesting to my erudite friends from one of Magic's best-known authors and performers. Whether or not you know anything about Joshua Jay or the book, I hope that you'll find this episode to be as interesting as I did in making it. If you don't already know the name Joshua Jay, that's okay. Allow me to make an introduction. Joshua Jay is a young, around 40-ish magician, originally from Canton, Ohio, and now residing in New York City. He is a prolific performer and creator. There are a number of tricks that he has created and marketed, as well as writing a few books on other people's magic and the one that many of us know him for, Magic the Complete Course. He is the co-founder of Vanishing Inc. He has performed on Penn and Teller Fool Us and Fooled Them, spoiler alert. He's performed on The Tonight Show, Late Night. You've probably seen him on TV, on YouTube, or somewhere out there if you've been a magician for any length of time. He's one of the most respected and trusted voices among magicians, and he has written a book to explain to lay people how magicians think. The book is a 300-page hardback with a gorgeous dust jacket as well as equally delightful chapter introductions that are in full color. Some of you already know this, but let me just tell you, I absolutely love the smell of this book. Totally reminds me of my childhood with all of that color ink on the paper. It just takes me back many years and automatically made me like the book even more. Each chapter is titled as a question that has ostensibly been posed to Joshua Jay at some point during his career. The chapter that follows is Joshua Jay's answer to that question and was written as he was performing around the world. Sure, some of the questions seem apocryphal. I don't think I've ever been asked some of these questions, but I still think that it makes for an interesting way to present the book with the question and answer format, very similar to what you're seeing in this episode. The author never fully explains, but it seems logical based on the weird internal references that he intended you to be able to open to any chapter that you thought was an interesting question and begin reading. If there's something reading the chapter that catches your eye and has a cross-reference, you can go over to that section and read about that question. Josh intended this book for the lay audience or muggles, people who don't already perform magic. Sure, there's some garden variety exposure in the book where Joshua J allows them behind the curtain just a little bit to see what's going on with the performer, but it's just enough to energize the initiated and not enough to sate the merely curious. I certainly wasn't worried about anything in the book being exposed to the public. In fact, I think that the book could get someone interested in becoming a magician if they're the person that's on the bubble about magic. Ironically, I think that the book's ideal audience is probably magicians, and it hasn't been marketed in that way. Vanishing Inc. has been pushing the book as supporting Josh and that he hopes magicians will like the book, but frankly, I think that magicians would love the book. Josh is one of those insiders. He's been performing magic since he was a little kid, and so that's all he's ever known. He grew up in that environment of magic. He tells a little bit of that story in the book. But because of that, he's traveled the world, meeting all kinds of performers, spending time with Juan Tamariz in his home in Spain, traveling to Argentina. And throughout the book, you're getting this vicarious feeling of getting to meet some of Magic's greats, Penn and Teller, David Copperfield, David Blaine, spending time with people that you know and love as magicians. I think there's a good bit of jargon and obscure characters 
that a muggle audience won't truly appreciate. There are references in here to the jerks. You have Mike Caveney coming around the corner at Copperfield's museum. Josh discusses the too perfect theory. All of these things I think appeal to magicians to have an erudite discussion and to learn more about magic and its history. Sure, Josh introduces you to who these characters are, but if you already have a little bit of that history, by being in the magic scene, I think you'll get a lot more out of it than someone who's being introduced in a two or three sentence blurb. Now, I'm no prude, but unfortunately there was some language in the book by Josh himself that would prevent this if it were a movie from receiving a PG-13 rating. I found it to be completely at odds with what I know of Josh, and granted, I don't know him well. Whenever I've seen him perform, whether on TV or in person at Magi Fest, during interviews or discussions, I've never really heard him use profanity. However, in the book, there were several times where he threw in a GD or an F-bomb that I thought was completely unnecessary. Whenever someone uses coarse language in a performance, I always tend to think that they've lost a level of professionalism with their audience. Of course, unless that's their character. Knowing what I know of Josh, that's not exactly his performing persona or what I've seen in his other written works. In short, it felt a bit sophomoric, and I was slightly disappointed in that aspect. My favorite parts of the book had to do with the creative process that you see from a number of magicians that he deals with. For example, he tells you about Juan Tamri's daily routine for creativity, to say nothing of his own. When you have two magicians of the magnitude of Juan Tamri's and Joshua J, you have my attention, and I'm taking notes on how I might improve my creativity. Sure, some of the questions I already knew the answers to, but that didn't change that there were details in Josh's inside viewpoint that I've never had as someone who's more on the fringes of the magic society. The book is labeled on the dust cover as being $27.50, although I believe that you can get this for $25 at almost any retailer. Ultimately, I think this is a book written by one of America's top magicians for other magicians. It's certainly my hope, as I'm sure it is Josh's, that it will appeal to the lay public, and I hope it goes on to phenomenal success. But my audience is primarily magicians, and I'm here to tell you I think you would enjoy this book. I certainly did, and while I don't think it's going to be one that I refer to again and again and again, I'm sure I will go back and revisit it because of the enveloping feeling it gives you to just soak in magic without the pressure to have to learn a trick. So if you want to walk along with a magical friend and just hear what they have to say, have a conversation with Joshua J, you can pick up this book and read his thoughts about why magic matters. By the end of the book, I had been challenged personally to consider why does my magic matter or does it at all? I've made some notes in my journal and I plan to revisit the magic that I perform in light of what I read in this book and see Am I performing the kind of magic that leaves people with the right questions? I loved the conclusion of the book because I am, by nature, a questioner. I'm someone who challenges the status quo. And Josh explains that he feels that that is part of the role of magic in today's world. I won't spoil all of his thoughts by telling you. I hope that you'll pick up the book and check it out for yourself. As always, my friends, until next time, keep reading.